The Notary's Unsealed podcast is brought to you by the Notary Success System and Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions. Coming up on this episode. They are targeting people who don't have goals. So I encourage all notaries, come into the game with your own set of goals. And the money was flowing in, right? And then all of a sudden, it stopped. It started to slow down. Then they had to shift in management. A lot of these people, their customer service is really going to be based off of how they handle themselves in the W-2. Yeah, for a lot of folks, you end up being an employee with the EIN. You know, <laughs> pretty much that's, that's, that's what you end up being. Real smooth this time. We know the breeze unsealed. Uh huh. This my everyday life. Yeah. We know the breeze unsealed. Ooh. Every day I hustle out here living it right. Let's go. We know the breeze unsealed. Put the stamp down and stop uh. in front of the mic. Here we go. Took the game over. We yeah. home now. We soldiers. Riff, Matherin, and Q the podcast. You can't hold us. Y'all heard the word. Uh. Y'all heard the word. Uh-huh. Riff, Matherin, and Q. Yeah, we on the What's verse. What's going on, so notable world? Welcome back to another episode of Notaries Unsealed. I'm your host, Quentin Smith, and I got my guys with me, Uncle Griffin Mathman. Say what's up to the people, fellas. What's going, what's on, going on, Ah, I tried to beat him wow. into it. Ah. Both at the same time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anxious. You, what's you going on, all the people? Mathman, what's up, man? Uh, not much, man. I'm over here in my car right now, man. You know, I'm dedicated to this podcast, so you can't say I'm not dedicated. I'm literally set up. A man looks like covert office. ops right now. I know <laughs> covert ops in the in, in the van, <laughs> like he's setting up. Mm-hmm. He got all y'all blacked out and everything. Now you know what's gonna be weird is that he doesn't have his little snuggie on, so he can't be out there. <laughs> right? <laughs> they gonna think something going down with him. Like, why is this guy, this big burly guy, sitting in the car with a snuggie on? <laughs> Oh yeah, you know we dedicated here. You know we had to make. We appreciate it happen. that, man. We appreciate that, Matthew. <laughs> Thanks, man. Griff, what's up? Ah, uh, not much, man. Just chilling. Um, just enjoying myself, my life, and um, everything. So, I'm um, just trying to see how the rest of this month going to be. It's been a little quiet this month, starting off. But um, it has been a little quiet, man. Yeah. It's like turkeys. These, I know. <laughs> it's like they know they know they in season right now. I know. So. <laughs> Yeah, I've been sort of taking a little bit of everything, but I will say um, e-notary stuff has been popping a little bit more lately for me, so I'm I'm tight on that, um, even so much that somebody called me up um, on the 30th of last month of um, October um, to do a uh, closing for them in the middle of the day. They were like, hey, can you do a closing for us? I like, if we can do it at 5 p.m., I'll knock it out. They're like, go for it. That's so. It. Get it done. Yeah, so I've been taking advantage of all the opportunities that's been coming across my path. Dude, I love good. it. I love it. I hope the rest of you guys out there that are notaries that listen are doing the same thing. Fellas, I am so excited right now. This thing has been building. I I, I wanted to say it as soon as I, I came on, but I couldn't say it because we got a guest. We got a special guest today, guys. <laughs> and I hope that the audience, you guys are ready for this. Yep. You know, this is somebody that I, when we first started this podcast, I was like, okay, this person, she has got to be on this podcast. Got to. And, got and we to got her. It. We didn't even have to beg. Like, we were mm-hmm. ready to beg, right? I'm serious. Oh, yeah. We were so, we, we had a campaign that we was like, yo, we are getting her and we will just not stop on Instagram and social media until we get her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 2022, NNA, Notary of the Year. Miss Samantha Smith. Wonk, wonk. How we Yay. doing? How we doing, yeah. young lady? <laughs> Look, y'all are an absolute mess, but I am so, <laughs> so glad to be here tonight. Thank you for the um for the invitation. Um, but most importantly, thank you for the support. Each of you all do not um Y'all not shy about supporting people in the notary community. And that is huge. It's always genuine. It's always love. So um, I appreciate all of that. Well, you know what? We got to, first of all, it was you that brought me and Matherin together. Yeah, that's true. Because had y'all not done the Father's Day. Yeah, the Father's Day special a couple years ago. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) So so you, you started this. So if anybody don't like the notaries on seal, don't want to give it, you know, but we ain't going to let nobody mess with Samantha. It's all Samantha's fault. It's Samantha yeah, started it's fault now. So, Look, I'm serious. I, I take it. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> uh, I have to give a shout out to my girl, LaShawn yep. Jenkins. That was an amazing run that we had with uh, Sign and Sealed. It's not necessarily over. We just, you know, we stopped because we wanted to make sure that, um, 
we were doing original things like you guys are doing this original thing with the podcast. Yeah. We didn't mm-hmm. want to just be doing what everybody else was doing. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's that not sound over, like a topic but, for the night. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh, look, look, y'all. Do y'all like, get into all this trouble regularly? Yes. It sounds oh, yeah. like y'all just stay in trouble. Oh yeah, you look for trouble hey. all the time. <laughs> no, you you're right, you're right. But see, you know what? That what that is that is excellent because notaries need to understand that they need to recognize and survey their environment and, the, and what they're doing. And like, okay, I'm doing the same thing as everybody else. Or matter of fact, you might be the original, and everybody is so busy copying off of you that it makes what you're doing that's original doesn't look so special anymore so it's like okay let us come at a different angle but that's good because you're like okay what is everybody else doing and that's you know we all know that's what et talks about tony robbins les right. mill all of these people they talk about finding a niche that nobody else is doing and then if everybody, okay everybody want to flood in there then either you make it even more special or you find something else and that's all y'all did so that's excellent Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and like I said, I enjoyed it. I love LaShawn. Um, I love what she has been able to do with her platform. And she, again, so supportive of all the notaries. Um, and when we met, it, it was no different. So um, um, I'm glad that we was able to get y'all together. I didn't realize that was the first time y'all had connected. Yeah, that was. You know, yep. Three, yep, Griff. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure. Um, I think what Gary was, Gary Gary was on, on there. On That's that what connected. Gary was on there. Yeah. Yep. So Gary, mm-hmm. he Gary was. was on there, and there was a couple other gentlemen on there. But definitely, definitely the start of me and Griff for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we got, you know, then we had to deal with the pandemic notaries. So it's like <laughs> we were constantly <laughs> looking for trouble hey. out here. Yeah. <laughs> Look, but then it was it was y'all that introduced me to Q. Yeah. Just one hey. day, I don't know where the captivated notary just kind of like just popped, popped up. up. I mean, just like literally, boom, <laughs> just showed up. And I saw these cute little shirts. I said, let me get some shirts here, honey, because these shirts are just doing everything. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anybody from Georgia started rocking the shirts. So I wanted to make sure I got in on the shirt game right. first. Mm-hmm. But um, Well, I appreciate the, the, that. Thank you. The fact that y'all have come together to do this, y'all know I'm always pushing and supporting not just for male notaries, but African-American male notaries to come out and come up and most importantly to come together. So this right here is just, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your support. And yeah, we, we know that. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, so you what got y'all got me on here talking about tonight? What y'all got me on here talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, sound, it sounds like you might've just dropped a couple things for us to, to talk about. I had, I had something in mind, but hmm, you know, this originality get, thing. Yeah, I we told you, man, we could probably do a, a three week series on this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's something to talk about when it comes. We'll, we'll talk after the show. We'll talk about it because I, I I read something about Samantha. We we'll, we'll talk. Maybe thought. Did you think about it? Did you think about it? We'll talk. We'll talk later. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's stay on this originality thing. I think that's a really <laughs> really good topic, uh, especially with me being you know the captivated notary and everything else going on right now. Um, originality is a big thing for me, and that's one of my staples with captivated notary marketing solution is is working one on one with folks. And what I'm seeing right now, and I think everybody's seeing it, and we're not trying to, you know, throw any dirt on anybody's name or stop anybody's cash flow or anything like that. I mean, there's people that are doing some great things and offering great services for folks. A lot of notaries are buying the same stuff that everyone else is buying. Yeah, pretty much. And selling. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey, you know what? Since since everybody having, like, different type of courses, pretty much the same thing, I'm thinking of, I'm not sure if if I could get your opinion on this, um, Sam, um, uh-oh. How to boil water properly? What room temperature do you need to boil water? Because everybody else is selling anything. There's there's a workshop for everything. I might as well start that. What's the right temperature? At which temperature does water start boiling? <laughs> you know, you know, Matherin, you could actually add an additional uh, fee onto that course if you um, go into adding salt. Right. <laughs> the science behind adding salt, salt mm-hmm. and boiling water. And does it and does it boil faster if you watch it or don't watch it? And then look, we can sell some glasses to help you to watch it. Okay, yeah. we got some we got some um, some notary glasses that can help you get that pot of water boiling. Oh, Real yeah. good. Does talking to it does talking to it That's help it. it? Just like plants, mm-hmm. right? Well, you know, I I think what's real interesting. And, and funny about what y'all are saying, but definitely true, is that um, everybody does have a course. Everybody's teaching marketing. Everybody's teaching Google My Business. Everybody's teaching 
um, um, general notary work. Like everybody is taking the exact same topics and rehashing them. But what I found is that two things. Mm -hmm. One, they are targeting people who don't have goals. So I encourage all notaries come into the game with your own set of goals. Uh And two, they are only teaching people to the level that they are at. Uh Oh, so they're not really, I'm, and, and if you want to add in a 2B, everybody that speaks isn't a teacher. Just because you can stand up in front of somebody Boom. doesn't mean that mm-hmm. you should be Man. teaching. Yep. <clears throat> hey, where's that Jamaican drum thing now? We need to get those sound effects on here. I, 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 I need I Funk Master Flex's drop bombs on them. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We need no, that. What you said is the truth right there. You are 100% correct, yes. Matthew. You just hit it on the nail. Thank and, you for and saying look, it. This is this is no reflection on um on anyone. I respect everybody that has the initiative and the heart and the finances to put into a course. You know, that's Absolutely. you. You know, do your thing. But, you know, even as um becoming course creators and teachers and also the kind of stuff, you know, just make sure one, you know what you're getting into and make sure you know what it is that, that you're working on as far as giving um, out information, just giving out the information. So yeah, just some things to to consider as, as people buy courses and as people create courses. So yeah. No, no heat, no shade, no shots fired. That's that's just the truth of it. Hey, the, the, yeah. the truth hurts, you know. That's what a lot of folks need to understand, you know. In this, in this industry, a lot of folks just out there just to get your money. They don't really care about if you're learning the material, if you're applying it. The only thing they care about is for you to feel bad for the situation and for them to get you to um, spend that money on their course. And most of the time, you can't even reach them. Like like I've had some people in the past couple of months we reached out to me because they think so-and-so's course and they can't even reach them yeah I'm like you just taking mm-hmm. folks money and now they need additional help and you acting like i can't help you that's not right mm-hmm. you know well and of course of course doesn't teach you everything i think griff and i talked about it mm-hmm. you know a lot of it is you got to get out there and do it right you got to get out there and do it and the part that that really amazes me and even recently i talked to a lady she called me was asking me about some groundwork stuff and she said, you know, she's going to take all these tra- this training, but she's scared to do it. And I'm like, OK, you know, this is what I learned. When you're afraid of something, you have to identify what you're afraid of yeah. and then have to come up with some way to mitigate that fear. So what is it that you're afraid of? And 99 percent of the notaries will say this. I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake. Got it. <clears throat> what type of mistake are you afraid to make? And sometimes they start hemming and hawing. They don't want to say it. And I'm like, mm, you got to tell me. I'm going to help you. Tell me what you're afraid to make. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. Okay, so how would you go about not missing something? And when I talk them through it, they come up with the solution where they say, well, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing, make sure I slow down and focus on what I'm supposed to be doing there, not getting distracted with side conversations and this yeah. and that. I said, okay, so you mean to tell me for the last 18 months that you've been a notary, you couldn't figure that out? So you mean to tell me you've been afraid to go and do this, but yet within five minutes, we figured out the plan and you couldn't have figured that out on your own. However, you more than likely have done this in your W-2 time and time again. When you go to college, you don't know everything. You might make a mistake. You might miss an assignment. You might miss a, a, a session. But what do you do? You identify what the problem is. And then you find a way you use a calendar, you talk to your, your parents or, you know, if you're depending on how young you are, you find somebody to help you remember to carry your butt to class, set alarms, all of that. So when you know that, oh, I don't I, I oversleep a lot. OK, what caused you to oversleep? Well, I'm hanging up late looking at Netflix. OK, carry your butt to bed and turn Netflix off. These are the <laughs> things that people are, are, are taught in the, or they do in a W-2, but they become a business owner, irregardless of the industry. And they act like they can't do those things. They're like, well, somebody needs to tell me how not to miss a signature. Well, if you're watching them sign a document, you make sure they sign where the name is printed. The name is printed there. I mean, yeah. So how can you help have them miss it? Well, sometimes I I, I get, okay, then stop getting that. That's all you got to do. And people are afraid to do it for whatever reason. Now, you got something to say. I see that. that, uh, Sam, let's go ahead on this, man. 
No, I I just I find it funny how um people mess up every single day. We make mistakes every single day. We put That's the true. wrong number down when we are writing our cell phone number down. We mistype. I mean, we got spell check on our text messages, but we still <laughs> misspell mm-hmm. stuff. We, you know, leave a word out in an email. We even, you know, I've seen some people. Um, I, I'm going to throw this at Q because um, he tried to call us old a little earlier. <laughs> I ain't calling you old. He messed up, you know, he messed up on, credit. you know, writing you checks. You yourself old. I said middle you age. Know, you said, well, I'm out of it. Well, shh. I'm just you, saying, you can be like, old if you want to. <laughs> we we mess up on a lot of things. We make mistakes on a lot of things, especially things that we are not that we don't necessarily know, like coming into a new business. And so we're people are getting so um, nervous and so tied up and so anxious. But I will say this about trainings: I am not talking about anybody's specific training, but. Training should not tell you how to think. I'm a big, big, big proponent that training should lead you, kind of like what you were alluding to, Griff, to make those critical thinking um, decisions and use those critical thinking skills on your own. No part of education, and that's me coming from an education background, no part of education should tell you how to think or what to think. It should just prompt you to think. Like, what is the next step kind of thing? So, you know, people have to be mindful when they're going into training. They're not supposed to necessarily tell you exactly what to do, but they're giving you the tools so that when you're in any situation, you can think your way through it. Okay, so then that means your the notary trainer should have some level of experience as a notary doing signings of various different types. Instead of just saying, I'm only doing refis or I'm only doing, you know, purchases or, or here's the biggest one. And I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me when I say this, or they're, they, they work direct, but yet they hopping on every social media platform, telling notaries who aren't direct how to go about doing closings. And you're in an environment that doesn't necessarily support the mobile notary. And I've, and I see that a lot. This person is direct. They work with new home building or, you know, new construction and all of that. And that's a total different environment. But then they hop on social media telling notaries, well, this is how you need to go about doing the documents and you need to explain the documents. And I'm like, okay, so you're a mobile notary. Oh, well, no, I'm not mobile. I work inside of uh, a title office and that's what they want us to do there. So you don't work with 15 different signing companies and title companies per month. No, I only work with one or two. Okay, see, that's different. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 totally different. You that need is. to qualify that. And they don't qualify their statements. And the biggest mistake, and I know Matthew got something to say about this. The biggest mistake is that they don't ask the questions to qualify the people. You know, in other words, they don't, they don't challenge the people to say, okay, wait a minute. Qualify your statement that you're telling me as to how I should be doing my job. What you got, Matt? Man, look, as far as those who are preaching going direct, and my and my uh, my experience is that like it's not good for you to just deal with direct companies because you know spe- I know a lot of folks are making a lot of money during the pandemic. I had an experience where I was going to the start of company in Rhode Island and they were getting me like this 10 15 signing like weekly and stuff like that. So and the money was flowing in, right? And then all of a sudden, it stopped. It started to slow down. Then they had a shift in management. Now, the same ma- the same company I used to get all this signing from, I used to get maybe, I want to say, 20, 25, you know, like monthly if I want to just it, it just average it out. But you don't want to go direct. You don't want to go direct because now oh, you have to ask yourself, am I still a business owner or am I a W-2 employee? Because mm-hmm. if that's who you are depending on for you to do your signing and let's say you go in there one morning and they say, hey, we don't need you today. Or we found somebody that's going to ch- charge us $75 less than what you were charging. So mm-hmm. it's always good to get that experience. So I know based on your area, you going direct might work for you. But in my opinion, that's not something that, at least for me, at least for me, it does not work for me. Yeah, for a lot of folks, you end up being an employee with an EIN. Yeah, you know, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, that's 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 what you end up being. <laughs> yeah, 
You know, but kind of going back to what you were saying earlier, Griff, I think a lot of, of what hinders newer notaries is the fact that even if they're scared of making mistakes, they don't know what to do after they make a mistake. And I think that that's not something that's really spoken about because if you knew how to correct your mistakes, then the threat or, or the thought of making a mistake, it kind of goes away because you know everything is fixable. Correct. Right? Yeah. And, and, and I think what, what really needs to end up happening, you know, outside of just training about these documents or how do you run the table is just general customer service and how to handle yourself with business. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were to make a mistake, how do you handle that situation? But you know, Q, I think can you really teach customer service? I mean, I'm just, something. you know, I'm just asking. I know that, you know, that's um, a good question. Chick-fil-A makes millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars off of the customer service. They are the customer service standard. But can you really train or teach? It has to be service? in you. You're, you're right. It's something that has to be inside of you. You have to want mm -hmm. to do that. You have to want to be a good business. You have to want to have a reputable right. name. You have to want to, to to kind of build that foundation for your business um, and say that this is how we're going to operate. So what it really comes down to, and I, I say this all the time, is what is your mission statement? When, you, when, you're, when you're putting together your business and you're putting together your business plan, did you come up with a mission statement to, to carry your business by? Do you have pillars? <laughs> Right. Well, for a lot of these people, and I think I've said this a few times on my channel um, on YouTube, is that a lot of these people, their customer service is, is really going to be based off of how they handle themselves in their W-2. So right. if they had little snarky, snippy attitudes, and I think, Samantha, you work on a college, and I think you know that sometimes, you know, some of those people in admissions and things of that nature financially, student go down there and just have a simple question. What do you want? I'm bit, you know, they have that. So you take that person. I mean, let's think about the scenario. You're minding your own business and I'm a, I'm a snippy, snarky person, male, female, black, white, don't matter. And all of a sudden I realize I need to make more money for my household. And all of a sudden I see somebody telling me I can make all of this money as a notary and be, have my own business. Well, I always wanted my own business. So now in a, in a matter of microseconds, you leave on Friday with your little snarky attitude, come back Monday with your snarky attitude. But now you're also a business owner. When did you learn customer service? If you've been a butthole the whole time out there treating people bad and now you're going to come into being a notary and instantly you can be good. You can be nice. You can be cordial. You can be respectful. You can handle people criticizing that you forgot to do scans or you forgot this, forgot that, it's not going to happen because it wasn't in you from the get-go like you just said. And that's the part, like you said, that's not being taught in these trainings with people. They're just saying, hey, just come and learn this. And 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 basically, what it, what it, especially with the black community, fake it till you make it. Yep. They're buying the bag. We just talked <clears throat> about this last yeah. episode. People sure are chasing is. the bag. They're following the bag like, like the... Silly rabbit trickster for kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at you showing your age, Q. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Hey, I appreciate it. I'm not that far from 40. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Until the little youngsters, uh, Samantha. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but look, see, for me, I think that good customer service skills, good business skills, good any kind of skills um, aren't necessarily taught, but they can be developed. And I think that's more personal developed. And this is just my opinion. I don't know who out here listening that may have a contrary opinion. This is my opinion. I think those things can be developed, but I think it has more to do with the self-awareness than anything mm -hmm. else. So like Griff was saying, we'll take the um, example of uh, you got a bill due, this, due in 14 days where you hear about mobile notary. So you run out here trying to get all your stuff together. Let's just say you got it all together in five days. We know that's not realistic, but we just pretending. Yeah. And so everybody you come in contact with, your customer service skills are based on the anxiety of it because I got to pay this mm -hmm. bill. It's based on the pressure that's mounting because maybe this is your eviction notice or whatever that's coming up dealing with your rent. So it's about developing, not necessarily the training 
of, again, my opinion, the training of customer service. And, and a lot of people, because they, you know, some of these pressures might be new or they're applying these pressures to that business, you know, it, it's a recipe for disaster and it's no room or time to even develop customer service skills when it comes to your business. Mm, you put your weight <laughs> on that one, girl. <laughs> you, you lean hard on that one. Uh, I'm serious. That was, that was a thousand percent on point. Mm-hmm. Was, I got nothing to say. Well, I mean, that's, that's what a, that's what pandemic notaries were. Yeah, it was the pressure behind the the pandemic, behind the loss of jobs, behind the illnesses that were coming about, behind just the fear of not knowing what the other side was going to look like. And and I am in no way judging anybody. I I became a mobile notary during the time of the pandemic, not because of the pandemic. Yep. But mm-hmm. those, no you know, yeah, those who made the decision to do it because of the pandemic, there was still a lot more uh, development probably that needed to take place. And there was really no time for it because there were, you know, pressures and deadlines they had to meet and it translated over into their business services. And what's weird to me is that some of the people out there who marketed this business, they know the importance of customer service, but in my opinion, they lack the willingness to teach that or to encourage people or to show people how to have that customer service. And then what's even what's even um, in something that popped up in my head a couple of days ago with now that the mortgage industry has changed. A lot of people have had who are trying to teach this stuff. They had experience or have experience in the mortgage industry. So they knew and know what the flow is. <clears throat> and that's why I give Bill Soroka so much credit because from day one that I got connected with him back in 2018, he always said the 2008 thing threw him off and there's ebb and flows. So I knew that it's riding high, it's going to go low, it's going to be stagnant. It's go- And I'm sitting here like, but are these people who actually, and he didn't have experience in the mortgage industry. So I'm like, are the people who got experience in the mortgage industry, but are now trying to teach notaries, are they sharing that gym as everybody's always looking for the tips, tricks, and nuggets? Are they selling? I hate that that phrase. Tips, tricks, and nuggets. (laughs) nuggets. You know, everybody just loving it. Tips, tricks, and nuggets. Mm. Tips, tricks, and nuggets. Mm. I'm about to do 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 a rap man about that one. I don't. (laughs) TTN rap. (laughs) That's about to be another t-shirt, man. I'm serious. But they, but you, you know, there's a problem, you know, especially if you worked in a title office and you know how title office, but then why are you telling every notary they got to be direct when you know that there's not enough work coming straight from any one title office to handle no. 15, 20, 30 notaries? No, 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 I don't think there's too many title offices in house in town have enough business to handle 30 notaries to so, give them so enough money. Can I say something about this whole direct thing? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in an attorney state and, you know, anything can happen. Yep. You can connect with an attorney and work the work that angle. But I think, you know, people have overused and maybe misused the word direct. Mm-hmm. I mean, even mm-hmm. if you look it up in the dictionary without and I'm going to use the word to define the word. But it's like immediate contact. It's like direct contact. Mm -hmm. So you can go direct a number of ways. It doesn't have to be, you know, I got to find this attorney's office. I got to go market myself to the title companies. I literally did a post on LinkedIn about it the other day where it's like somebody found me on a signing service platform and that particular attorney, attorney's office, calls me now for all of their stuff in this area. I work directly with, um, I can't call their name, Metro Site Inspections. Anytime something comes up in this area, they call me directly. So it's like, right. I've kind of worn that word out and don't understand anytime you make one-on-one contact with someone that is direct. So now it's up to you to, maintain that connection so Mm -hmm. you can work directly with them moving forward 
and and stop you know dragging people because they're not working direct i saw a, a post one time that said if you're working for a signing company are you really a business and am i sure am still a business because yeah. this is the platform that you know that i like i enjoy working with i can still make direct contact with people i can still get direct business from them but it's more based off of you know how am i handling myself as a notary as a business owner you know that they can rely on me when things come up in my area so i i think we just kind of warn this direct word out mm-hmm. well i think well q <clears throat> well q tell me what you think about this statement i think when they do that like that post that samantha just said i think what they're doing is trying to psychologically manipulate that person into feeling they're not about anything so that they can come to them and either one take their course or two click on their affiliate link so that they can take a course (laughs) that they can make some money off of that's what it is and i mean in this business what I, i i said this several months ago this is so far, this has really been the only side business, and I won't say hustle, but side business that I've done that has that people are constantly telling you what not to do. Yeah. And the things they're telling you what not to do are things that you should be doing to make money. And they're constantly telling you what you are doing isn't good enough because look at what I'm doing, which is feeding into the frenzy of people feeling inadequate. I felt about to sound sounding like some daggone professor now. Feeling oh inadequate no, no, of the articulation of the masculation on, of the apocalation. <laughs> <laughs> Damon Wayans from In Living Color. Look, you just showed your age on that one. I know oh, this one. <laughs> But they are actually making you feel less than a human being in some cases that you don't have what it takes. And what's sad is that many of these people have been very, very successful in their W-2 life, in their marriage life, in their raising children's life as a single mom, as a single dad. And then they come into the notary world and all of these people are telling them, you ain't about nothing unless yeah. you are doing it my way. And now you're scrambling, trying to run your business the way that they're running theirs. And the sad part is they ain't even in your own state. No. They're in three states over, five states up, and they don't even have the same rules and guidelines as you do. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and 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 see, here's the thing. Yeah, you got to pay attention real- to words. <laughs> there were several notaries out there that was talking about when they were talking about how you can make money in this business. And they kept saying this one word that made me start investigating it. They kept saying escrow state. You can make two to three hundred dollars, you know, per signing when you're in an escrow state or escrow direct, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Bump all the everything wait, wait, else what? you're saying. You are yeah. emphasizing this word escrow. Yep. What is an escrow state? And then I started researching and I was like, oh, here are these escrow states. So that means what you're saying is applicable to anybody in this category. Am I in that category? It's either yes or no. And if I'm not, then how do I make that money? And that's when I started figuring out you're only you can you can only mark their marketing outside of the bounds of their state to people who are in another state that have restrictions on them and they're not giving disclaimers and clarification. And the person coming in new don't know to look for that or to they just nope. they're not even catching it. And they're thinking I can make the money. And it's a it's a slick way of I'm going to catch you with the money. Two hundred dollars or signing or three hundred, and you forget everything else because back to what Miss Samantha said earlier, you got a bill due in fifteen days, yep. <laughs> and that bill due in fifteen days, and you're telling me I go and give you six hundred dollars, and I can start making this money, <laughs> and you got a list that I can buy from you, although every oh, dad on notary oh, list, look, oh, every Not signing list. company list that I've heard of out there. 80% of those crap. companies not even in business anymore. Nope, not at all. Not at all. Because for those, of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> look, I ain't trying to, look, I'm going to just. That's the Go ahead on, man. List, Put your weight on it, man. <laughs> no, man, because I think what I'm about to say will get us in some serious show. But no, nah, the list is the Go same, man. It. Come the on list, with it, man. The, the, the list is the same. For those of you who know about, you know, a couple of training that I took when I initially started out. If you want to know, uh, you can go on the YouTube uh, on the YouTube channel when Q interview me. The list they provide is the same. It's the same list I've seen throughout 
No reason I share it in Massachusetts. No reason I share it in Connecticut. No reason I share it in down in Florida. It's the same list. And just like Griff just said, half the companies are not even, they're not even in business. So you, so you paying for an outdated list. And it's crazy, this whole list idea, it's the same way in the real estate industry. They always, there's always a slick, slick person that want to sell you this motivated seller list. Except in the notary industry, <laughs> they're doing it for signing services. So it's like, they like there's a scam artist in every industry, and it's like the list is something that's very common. <laughs> and they always talking about these, yeah. And they say, and a lot of them say, well, get the three star and the four and the five star <laughs> companies or the four and five star company. But those are the ones that's out of business, and the ones yep. that are in business are the one and two star ones. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, so how do I make money in this? And and I get it, you know, but that's what you got to do. You do diligence and Absolutely. everything, you know, with this. And and after all of this, people, I'm telling y'all, this is still one of the best businesses you can be in because I'm going to tell y'all like Bill Soroka said, two things he said, and I always refer to this here to keep me motivated. One, it's always oversaturated. If you plan on being a mediocre notary yeah. and two, every house out here that has a mortgage on it needs a notary. So if they got a mortgage or a deed of trust, you got to have a notary and every house goes through, uh, can go through up to five different cycles or more purchase, sell, refinance, HELOC, reverse mortgage. Those just the main five. And they can go through those throughout the lifetime. They say people re refinance. Every seven years, I'm like, all you and all these houses popping up now, I'm like, you could stay in business for a long time. And how do you stay in business? Learn how to do the business. And when you got that, boom. So if you're in Georgia, y'all got to hit Samantha up, the Georgia Notary Network, and she will take care of you. All right, that's it. So um, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. <laughs> Do you need a little help advertising your notary business? Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions helps you better build your business locally. It's the only service we offer. Created by founder Quentin Smith to assist other notaries be successful. We offer affordable solutions like unique custom logos, premium digital ads, and multiple options to help you build your social media presence. Visit us online at www.captivatednotarymss.com Subscribe today and get captivated. It's Captivated, baby. Yup, that's the name that we go by hey. when we let the post fly. It's Captivated, baby. We got hoodies and tees for all your notary needs. Know what I'm talking about? It's Captivated, baby. Nobody yeah. does it like me. Yeah. So it's best to believe yeah. when you see it's it. It's Captivated, yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, we do this. We got yeah. the newness. Just don't yeah. forget. It's Captivated, yeah. baby. Q. The Notary Supremo. T-shirt ad sounding just like a demo. Podcast song. Blast shout out to our demo. Graph how I laugh with my foot on this pedal. Somehow I lost my mind. Have you seen all these designs? And I sell them things cheap. $24.99. What's your name? What's your size? Forget it. Never mind. The Captivated store. Order pay another time. A notary that rhymes. Yes, that's him, lady. Commission with these writings. I've been spitting crazy. Witness all the ways we give it. All we say that we do. It's true. It's Guess Captivated, who? baby. It's Captivated, baby. Witness all the ways we give it. All we say that we do is true. It's Captivated, baby. Getting ourselves together. We had a nice little conversation behind the scenes with Samantha cutting up. I think Matherin um, is looking for bottles because I, I don't know if we explained this to you. I think we did in the beginning. Matherin is in the car right now um, because he's got mm -hmm. some family over. He's got a new baby in the house. And, and so he he loved y'all so much that he said, I'm going to go get in the car and make sure that we get this audio down right so that way there's no babies in the background. Yeah, but then he goes five and, bottles of water. Yeah, then he goes and starts <laughs> drinking a whole bunch of water. <laughs> So you know what's coming. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Samantha, Samantha, Samantha Smith is still with us, guys. Uh, say hello again, Samantha. Hey. <laughs> All right, so Samantha, I got a question for you. All right, you 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 are busy. You know, you've got the W two, you've got notary, you've got um a lot of things that you're wrapped up in. What is your go to meal? You know, like you're running late. You you are you know. You're, you're running home like, yo, I got to get get food cooked. What's your go-to meal? Everybody got go-to meal. Oh, my god! What are we doing? What is my go-to meal? Um, one of Got to cook things. it, though. You have to cook it. It can't, it can't yeah, it can't, it can't be like oh. KFC or nothing like that. Like something that you're nah, cooking. Nah, nah, oh, I, don't, I don't eat KFC anyway. Um, grilled cheese sandwich. Grilled cheese. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you cook the grilled cheese? Though? What kind of cheese do you like? We gotta break this down. Hold up, hold up. How, what kind of cheese do you like with this? So, um, you know, anybody that really knows me knows I can eat, right? <clears throat> so <laughs> I put like two different kind of cheeses on it. I have to put okay. a slice of the regular cheese, and I got to pile it with like the shredded cheese. Oh, oh, okay. So I, I just I load it down with cheese. And so wait, I, are you just doing cheddar? Are you doing monster? Are you doing Kobe um, Jack? What are we doing? American and cheddar. American and cheddar. American is that, and cheddar. Is that white American or yellow American? Look how spoiled we are in America. I mean, seriously, <laughs> and, look, and, and it's not even real. It's not even real cheese. It's right? processed cheese slice. Oh, whatever, so no, the, so whatever no. it is on the I gotta down. use. I gotta get the, no, mine can't be in a plastic. Mine got to be the ones that you got to yeah. peel off of each other. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, the deli cheese. Look, everybody don't have it like that. Back in back in my day, <laughs> back in my day. We had the big block of cheese that we had to slice off that guy. So oh, hey, any, anything too. after that is being nah, spoiled. Had that. Yeah, we we had the big I block. I remember people with that. Yeah, uh-huh. it's the welfare cheese. <laughs> Just gonna put it out. I ain't had that yeah, cheese. I had that. Like, I had what that. what you know about fried bologna? Yeah. yeah what? Oh. Yeah, and no, I, I did the fried bologna. Come mm-hmm. on now. Yeah, I throw down on the fried bologna, but yeah, nah, that, bologna that big old different. block of cheese or Velveeta cheese. Nah, I don't, mm-mm. No, no, no. We're not talking Velveeta. We're talking government cheese. We talking yeah, I know. Cheese, I didn't mess with the government cheese. Yeah, but they made the best grilled cheese sandwiches, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That cheese got gooey. Oh, yeah. Uh, gooey cheese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's my so go-to meal, grilled those? cheese sandwiches. Now, you using regular butter or ghee butter? Mm-hmm. I have ghee butter. But I'm using regular butter. Oh, okay. See, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I done switched over to ghee. I actually make my own ghee butter now. So. Really? And I need to do a video about that because it, it, it's a little bit of a process. But, mm-hmm. man, it tastes it tastes way, it tastes so good. I love You're it. talking like he, he figured out how to make cheese. Like, wait a second. I'm going to take this cow. On the second day, <laughs> pour <the> milk. <laughs> That's right, man. And then churn that milk. That's right, man. Cal, this is what I made you for. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some grass-fed cows, man. You up there? You said about Lancaster where? I oh yeah, so. that grass-fed hey, beef some milk, is man. different. That grass-fed beef is different. Right. If y'all, if y'all get a chance to come out here, man. There's a there's a couple of places that have grass fed beef cheese steaks completely different than what you're getting out there in the city. It is really? a completely different flavor of beef. It tastes so much better, so much cleaner. Um, yeah, man, I try it out. Definitely yeah. try that out. Yeah, you I'm not sending no meat. Well, Mather, I, 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 I had to say before man, you even start, I, I ain't don't start no eating nothing, Mather. <laughs> 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 no, man, I just got water, man. Look, I think what well, we did, uh, me and the kids, we did like we made almond milk earlier, so we had that bad boy soaking since last night, so we finally got that going. So that's the only thing I did today, and then uh, I got plenty of water in the car, and I got some pistachios. That's about it. That's like my go-to. Water and pistachios. Is that, is that your uh, your choice of of a uh, snack when you're on the road? Uh, yeah, pretty much. You know, if I can get some, if I can get some pistachios, you know, like I mentioned the last episode, you know, if I can find me a spot where there's onion rings, and then that's oh yeah, yeah, you know, that is pretty much it. I can between the onion rings and the pistachios, I am good. I'm mm. good. <laughs> we'll pie to you on that, man. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm not a big fan of the pistachio. Oh, yeah? Miss yeah it's, 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 I'll miss out. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and the onion rings. I can't do that. Oh, no, you're missing out. You're missing out. Yo, I'm over mm. here. 
Look, I'm not sure, you know, if I witness something, guys, I know we're recording, but if I witness something, like, this is crazy. Like, we, we got you. You got three extra eyes. Okay, we got you. Just sure, I got, I, I got two cards. <laughs> Samantha <laughs> said no. Can't Samantha count like, me in on mm-hmm. that one because I can't have C. I'm, I'm blind for real. So. <laughs> oh, no. You can't, uh, I'm sorry. You know, I maybe do some voice recognition. I can hear what you do, <laughs> but I cannot see. I will not be able to support you. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's a cold world out there. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Well, y'all know I've been chowing down on my muscadine grapes. They finally came in season. And where you got yours from? Um, they got a farmer's market up here, so I've been getting them from them, mm-hmm. and I've been putting them in my smoothies and my Vitamix um, that I'm still experimenting on. And I tell you, man, those muscadine grapes inside of that, and then I just bought some more pomegranates tonight, mm-hmm. so I'm going to smack them things up so I can get all the seeds out. Mm-hmm. And I tell you that, yeah, those muscadine grapes are delicious. I, I love, love muscadine grapes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So yeah like I might I have to couple, find some because I never had them. I love them. Oh man, they are delicious. Now, which ones? Because I, I this is the first time I, I normally have the champagne ones, but mm-hmm. I act, but they had the purple ones, mm-hmm. and I love them both. They both taste good. I like the champagne this? ones. Yeah, the what champagne ones are a little bit sweeter, a little bit easier to chew on. That mm-hmm. on the skin, the, the purple one skin's a little tougher. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, the, the purple ones to me taste better in the um, when you mix them in a smoothie because they seem to be a little bit sweeter mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, so I've been I've been chowing down on those and um probably ODing on them too. <laughs> and then <laughs> and I know I don't know if y'all saw my I did a Fritter Friday <laughs> update where they got the daggone Krispy Kreme apple fritters now. Yeah, oh, I seen man. that man. That looked good. Oh wow. What, oh, they, yeah. what, what, what charge for that? Like two seventy nine? I think so. Yeah, about two seventy nine. So it looked like a two seventy nine fritter. <laughs> yeah, man, that's no, smaller than it's smaller. It's smaller than the one than um the Duncan, but it has a little bit more appley taste to it. But man, I matter of fact, I just ate one earlier today. My second one, I had bought two, and I tell you, boy, that thing Dead is delicious, man. Oh man, yeah, Krispy Kreme is my jam. I wish that we had them. I think we got like two in the Philly area. Um, I miss them being down south, like. When I lived in um in Alexandria, Virginia, for some time, we had one, um, not too far from where I stayed at, and that red light. Also, I'm from Florida too, so like I grew up, I, I've always had Krispy Kreme until I moved up here up north to Philly. <laughs> um, that red light, it does something to you. It, mm-hmm. it does something. I'll tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was out there at like one in the morning trying to find some donuts one time. I was. I was fiending, yeah. I was like driving around to all these Krispy Kremes, and I was like, "Y'all got apple fritters? Nah, we don't." I was like, "Look, y'all need to get them apple fritters back." I mean, I was I was sitting up there like um, Samuel L. Jackson doing the crackhead bounce. I was sitting there, I was scratching. <laughs> Human Holly Berry in the daggone quarter. What was that? Do the right? No, no, no. Um, Jungle fever. Yeah, jungle fever. Mm-hmm. I was in that house, man. Like, man, I need me some daggone apple fritters. So, do you um eat the apple fritters from Publix, Griff? We don't have Publix up here. Oh, yeah. Don't look. Don't feel bad because there's no Publix up here either. We ain't got Publix up here. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, Publix is more so south. You know, I'm pretty mm-hmm. much from Georgia. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know Georgia, Georgia Florida. Florida. Florida got them. Yep. Yeah, I don't even think I've ever seen them in South Carolina or North Carolina, but yeah, Publix, yeah. And I remember back in the day, we used to have, this is showing my age, the SNH green stamps. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look, that was Piggly Wiggly. We had those um those green stamps, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, we used to have them things, and we sticking them on the thing, and you would collect all the little SNH green stamps, and then go and and get and re- free and food. redeem them for stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was before you had the Kroger card and food yeah. line card. Look, the green look, stamp. Y'all talk. Y'all look, talking these, about leaves. These young guys don't y'all, know y'all nothing about it. These young guys don't know nothing. They saw how quiet we got. Was, there was no currency, or you, you was just oh, taking leaves man. off a tree and saying, mm, "Take oh, this." Man. Oh, <laughs> saw how quiet they got. They were just. They were just waiting oh, their turn. They were just waiting their turn. I know. I know. I know. I know. Oh man, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, hold up. What you got oh, for man, us, I got to, I'm going to share the screen with y'all real quick. So y'all, so the fellas can see what s and green stamps look like. Ed- educate yeah, the young people. Educate hey, them. Hey, look, I had to go. Please educate look, me. Look, see, I had to go dark right quick, guys. I know y'all ain't seeing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, oh, hold on. Oh, man. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, about. folks. So f- I know that you guys can't see this <laughs> on the podcast. Griff just pulled up a picture of a palm tree with some leaves. <laughs> he said, "This is what I created the tree for." <laughs> so y'all can get free food. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he, he's showing the vintage S and H green stamps. Um, yeah. Not bad. And Look then you would take these little individual little stamps and stick them and in then the book. you would um click on them. I mean, then you would um stick them on this thing, and uh-huh. then once you had uh, so many. You could um redeem them for free, whatever at the store. Oh wow! Okay, so so, so why are you like box that? tops today? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That look, Griff, Griff, don't entertain this foolishness. Don't. Mm, so why you entertain that, these Griff? questions? Based on the picture, <laughs> 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 I probably still got something around here. <laughs> after you figured out that he needs to provide cash. subsidies. <laughs> Don't don't Shoot. entertain this foolishness, Griff. They don't understand. It's okay. I know, oh, I know, man. I know. And that glue, and then it was glue on the back of the thing, so you had to lick it. You had to lick it and put it on there. And <laughs> stick it on there. Yeah, it's like a stamp. Me. Like, well, you know mm-hmm. what? These guys probably don't remember that postage stamps actually. I still the same use postage thing. stamps. Yeah, but they're yeah, self cohesive now. They're yeah, they're self cohesive. No, no, no. But back in the day, mm-hmm. I still got some old ones that you got to lick. Oh, old okay. ones? What you mean by old ones? Old ones. Old ones, like your age, <laughs> <laughs> like your age ones. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm I'm let you have that one. Yeah, you yeah, walked right nice. into it. Yeah, I'm gonna let you. Much. I'm gonna let you have it. Uh, hey, you if have you leave it. me over for the what? shot, I'm gonna take it. Okay. I'm gonna let you have it. It's a cold word out here. It's a cold word out here. Old like yeah. me. Okay. Oh, I he got called you. for that, Simon. Like he called for that. Look, Wait, so I, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. What was your favorite movie from the eighties? I'm not sure if Blow mm. is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a good movie. movie. It'll probably have that? to be The Color Purple. Well, that's mm-hmm. when I saw it was in the eighties. So okay, it had to be The Color Purple. What about you, Griff? Oh, like, well, man. that was just yesterday. <laughs> I just got up from the eighties. <laughs> oh man, Nin- I mean, well, you had the Terminator oh, that was rolling back then. I never I liked Star the Wars. Term- the Terminator was in the eighties, girls. I, I think he was eighty nine. Nineties. I think Terminator hit eighty nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that the, yeah that hit eighty nine. Then you had Alien. I think that was yeah. I think you had Alien. Um, you had the ET Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh yeah, that was. Um, oh, yeah, those were good. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of my best favorite ones was Platoon. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, I, love, I got the movie. DVD on that one. Mm-hmm. I, I actually have the DVD. Um, Do the right thing came out back then, mm-hmm. so you had that. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite was Beverly Hills Cop. I I, I love me some some early Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I even had a T shirt. Um, not that long ago, I can't find it no more. I think somebody might have stole it from me. Maybe yeah, we'll talk about that though. Die Hard, Die Hard was, die good. Hard was good. Yeah, Die, die Hard. Series yeah, okay. Yippee Ki Yay! Let me yeah. stop. <laughs> Full Metal Jacket. I don't know if y'all remember that one. Full Metal Jacket. I that was a good that movie one. as well. Were, yeah. were you a, were you a Ghost fan? <clears throat> Did you like Ghost? Oh, I love Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a good movie. It was. It was. You know what? Y'all got a lot of jokes tonight. Y'all got a whole <laughs> lot of <laughs> lot of jokes tonight. That's all right. Look, I'm taking it all in. Look, I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I, I think. I think a, a movie that you know, since you know, when I was growing up in Haiti, I think Mad Max was popular. At least. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Mad another. Max you know, was I, I love Mad Max movies. I didn't know what they were saying at that time, but I'm like, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> No, one of my other favorites was uh, Crush Grooves. Crush Grooves was my jam. Oh, man, look. Crush Grooves. Did y'all like... Um... Oh, my God. I can't think of it. I, I see the little guy. I'm in... I was in love Am with... Am I the... breaking? You're Not breaking. Ozone and Turbo? Not breaking. Um, the Last Dragon. The last oh, dragon. yeah. That yes, was yes, the, yes, the Last Dragon. dragon. I love The Last movie. Dragon. That was a good, good movie. movie. I love it. Yeah. 80s movies were dope. I, I Like, 90s movies were okay, but 80s movies, it seemed like they were able to get away with a lot more storytelling. Yeah. Like, now it's like, like, today's movies are, like, hyper-realistic. But I think, like, back then, they, they it, 
it was like this magic in Hollywood, right? So it's like mm. they would make these movies like Teen Wolf and stuff like that, where it was just like back it was just cool. Yeah, back to yeah. Future, it was just cool. It it, mm -hmm. it just has a different feel than movies today. They were like mm -hmm. they were heavy, but they were like less. I don't I don't know the right way to to, to put it. Yeah. Well, that was back in the eighties. That's when um, Fatal Attraction came out. That had oh, a lot yeah. of folks scared. <laughs> that, mm, that, had a scared. Of, that had a lot of them dudes scared. They're like, oh, and, and, and then Martin came through in the 90s with a thin line between love and hate. hate? Oh, yeah. That was one movie. I look, yeah, that I like that. Regina King was in that, man. That mm -hmm. was that was a good one. That, that one was really, really, really good. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, so... Sure about Scarface. Was Scarface in the 80s or 90s? Yes. Scarface was Scarface in the 80s. Scarface was a horrible movie, man. Look, look, it's the storytelling, man. Look, that's what? Like, that was a horrible movie. What about, what about Goodfellas? I love Goodfellas. Goodfellas is a great movie. I love it. Great movie. Goodfellas. Casino, another great movie. Yeah. You know, but Scar Scarface, I... I it, it, it's a hood classic. That's about it's a it. Hood classic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like belly. Be Scarface. I'll take New Jack City over that. Oh, oh, New Jack is. Oh man, New Jack. New Jack you know City what I mean? Good. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm, like yeah. Pookie, like Pookie from New Jack. It be calling Pookie. me, man. Uh, it be just calling me. Calling me, me man. <laughs> How much for just one rib? <laughs> 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 now, who was I talking about this with? Um, Harlem Nights. That's another one of my favorite movies. I, I love Eddie Murphy. That one uh, scene where he with Della Reese and she like, go ahead, go ahead, quick, shoot me in my pinky toe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. That oh, that was man. a real, real good one. Yeah, yeah. What? Harlem Nights was. Yeah, that was awesome, man. That was awesome. I have yeah, never seen Harlem Nights. What? Oh, you got to. Why? Why? Oh. That's so classic. You got Richard Pryor, Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, or Arsenio. Hall. I mean, you've got. I mean, all, I'm, all I'm all aware of who was in the movie. I've just never seen it. Oh, mm. Can we get you to watch it? I don't know. I, I, I might be too old to watch it now, according to you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, nah, I mean, Della Reese in there. I mean, y'all about the same age now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Yeah, Q, 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 Q you on your own on that one. Q, you on your uh, own on that one. Q, Q, gonna, Q is going to wake up one night and uh. it's going to be Georgia notaries from everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm telling you, just haunting him. So you keep right on, because we don't play down here. Oh, keep on. Man, don't mess with them Georgia notaries, man. Keep See, on. I'm from Florida. So, well, I mean, I know you you, you, you claim yeah, some too. parts of Florida. Keep I'm on. Tampa, what? Why? Why? Tampa. Keep on. Keep on. Is Tampa Keep part on. of Florida? Uh, it's more a part of Florida than Jacksonville. You know, Jacksonville is it. Jacksonville got all the crazies. Um, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Man, when you look up Florida, man, half of them is from, from is from Tampa. I'm proud of that, by the way. My, oh, my, yeah. my city's crazy. Them people is crazy there. Shoot. Nah, mm -mm -mm. That's crazy. Nope. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, shoot. I'm right, down, I'm right down there in Boynton Beach, Florida. That's where I'm from. You where? Boynton Beach, Palm Beach County. Where? Exactly. Uh, yeah, huh? I mean, <laughs> what do you mean where? What do you mean where? I just said Palm Beach County. Uh, you got a lot. Of, you even, you got a lot of jokes. That when boy. I was growing up, in Palm Beach County. <laughs> what is Palm Beach County? What is that? It sounds like someplace in California. <laughs> you got a way with down there in, in Florida, but Palm Beach County. Palm Beach I'm like, County. Look, man. Man, Palm Beach County jokes. sound like they in Florida and it's eighty degrees and they they still drinking pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> or something down there. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I don't have a lot of jokes. Let him handle y'all like this on oh, this podcast. Man, man. That's Q, what y'all Q, no, Q just be driven lately. You know, that's all to it. Y'all, y'all be letting him handle no, y'all because uh... I'm behaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behaving. <laughs> the camera's on, and we got a guest. You should, you should hear the stuff on there. There's no camera oh, and no man. guest. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, be y'all letting him handle y'all. I don't know if I, I like that. That's why you need to come back. You need to come back so that way we can change. We can change things. No, <laughs> y'all do y'all thing. Y'all been doing, like I said, y'all been doing a great job. Like seriously, every Tuesday morning I get that tag from Matherin on Instagram. <laughs> you got <laughs> sold out now. Every Tuesday morning. You know how mm -hmm. it is. You know how. We it try is. to be precise with it. You know when you, when. You, when we set a record and you say that this is when we're going to release, people start to rely on that stuff, man. You know, yeah. they, they look for it. Sure, I, except for I my get, phone. 
except for my phone, because it didn't be released at 10 o'clock. My Apple don't get it to me until, like, noon. <laughs> That's what you get for using Apple. <laughs> yeah, man. It's yeah, like 12 o'clock. It says, new episode available. I'm like, damn. You should have known. Don't bite the Apple, Eve. <laughs> oh man that's crazy so you got any new and exciting things coming up for you, yeah, what Samantha? you got going on? now i know you, you now i know you've been working with the new notaries i know that's been going on um the scholarship and everything and anything else you got going on after that because i mean the georgia notary network y'all been popping down there how are we closing the year out? Well, we are closing the year out. Um, depending on when this is aired, the um, the notary the Heart Project Notary Scholarship will have been announced. So I will not divulge any um, any of the winners or any of the details. But that has been a really cool experience to be able to see notaries from all over the United States. Uh, share their desires, their goals, um, their needs, and even some of the trainings they participated in in order to be eligible for the scholarship opportunity um, with uh, additional training and additional resources that they'll be gifted. <clears throat> and that'll go down um, during Ms. Laura Buer's notary symposium. So again, depending awesome. on when this is, when it, this is going to be aired, um, those winners will be announced then. Um, as far as the Georgia Notary Network, we are gearing up for the 2023 membership year. As most people know, uh, we did not get Ron passed this year, and we're working now as the executive board to kind of decide if we want to pursue, you know, trying to make an impact with Ron. Maybe we need to take a step back and um, look at um, remote ink notarization or electronic notarization, um, but I, I know that getting Ron takes a lot more work than, you know, just passing a bill and it doesn't happen the next day. So right. um, GAN is just look is um, getting ready to just launch a couple of new initiatives as we do go into our next membership year, offer some additional great services. We already have our new GAN gathering location um, chosen for 2023. Maybe y'all can come to visit us in Georgia at our uh, GAN gathering in August. Go ahead and mark your calendars, sir. Oh, man. Ooh, 2023, too, huh? August, Georgia. It's hot in Georgia at that time. I like it. Uh, yeah, come on, come on. Near you, I love huh? that heat. Come on, come on to Georgia. Come to our GAN gathering in 2023. Looking forward to that. Hey, you know what? Can we record an episode if we do show up? <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, y'all can do um ep uh, your podcast from down there. Yeah, come oh, on. Oh, man, that would be good. Mm -hmm. that might be interesting come on <laughs> mm -hmm. um but we'll be releasing details about that once the new membership year kicks off january 1st but anybody if you're a georgia notary and you're interested in membership the application opens december 1st and closes on january 31st um 2023 so you have two months to um to submit your membership fee and application and all that so we can get the year rolling. So we, again, we are looking forward to um, to the upcoming year. Uh, for me personally, what am I? What do I have going on personally? Just continuing to help the Georgia Notary community through education resources and um, opportunities. I think Griff mentioned it earlier. All mm -hmm. notaries are looking for opportunities, and even more so in attorney states. So I'm always kind of looking and researching uh, about uh, for the different opportunities to help people expand their businesses, whether they are uh, have full-time jobs or they're pursuing their business as a full-time job uh, or pursuing their business as their full-time opportunity, always looking for things that people can plug into. So um, uh, just be on the lookout. I have a one big partnership that I'm working on that I hope will um, kind of turn the Georgia notary community on its neck. And that'll be coming from my company. She listens LLC. And uh -huh. um, that'll be in 2023. Drop bombs on it. Yep. Drop bombs on it. I love it. Yep. That mm -hmm. sounds awesome. Let me ask yeah. you a question if you don't mind. Sure. We're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make this podcast go a little bit longer because I'm gonna ask you a question that we would originally we were gonna go with, but I still wanna ask you. Okay. When, when you start making plans for GAN and you start making plans for your business 
you know, what does the end of the day look like for you? What is it that you're moving towards? I think ultimately what I'm looking towards or planning for is legacy. None of this is going to, the goal is, is not for this to exist just because I'm here or just because I'm still connected to anything. It's for someone else to see and catch the vision and run with it as well. So <clears throat> as notaries are always needed, we'll always have notaries. Correct. Whether we are doing it electronically or still having to do it face-to-face, -face, one of the things I try to tell Georgia notaries is, fortunately, not a lot has changed for us um, procedural-wise and all that. That doesn't mean that there still can't be some type of innovation. So, you know, we're looking for things like that. And like I said, for me personally, it's the legacy of it. Uh, a lot of people are too quick to tie their names to kind of fly by night kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it usually doesn't last. And so for Gan, uh, for She Listens, I'm interested in the slow build. I'm interested in the uh, slow elevation, so to speak, so that it's more lasting. And again, so that um, someone else can catch hold to it and take it to that next level. So I think that's the next thing for me. Have you found, I don't want to say a successor because you ain't going nowhere anytime soon, but have you found somebody that you're kind of grooming to, to follow behind you? Yeah, me. As soon as I move down there. <laughs> yeah, Mathurin, he's coming, he's coming uh, down south. Um, not yet, I guess, because I hadn't really thought about it. I saw a quote that said, um, and I know I'm getting ready to mess it up. It basically said that a leader doesn't leave when they're ready to. They leave when the, their successor is ready. And mm -hmm. so I, I took that to heart because a lot of times we think it's about when we're ready to go and it's not. It's about when the next person comes up. It's a lot of people in Georgia that's ready to go. They, I'm, I mean, they're just as fired up about things as I am. Um, and I'm so grateful that, you know, a lot of us have come together to do this thing that's the Georgia Notary community and the Georgia Notary Network and even their individual businesses. But I'm anybody that wants to join in, you know, let's go and and we'll, you know, we'll we'll worry about who's going to come up next then. Because in in my you know perspective, my opinion, I'm not necessarily leading the charge with anything. I'm arm in arm with people, and we all just on this whole let's go type thing. So I, I don't necessarily think there's a success a successor that's coming behind me it's all these other people that have linked arm in arm with me to um to push it forward how um because you are involved in the community there are you seeing um don't make fun of me for this all right a younger generation of notaries coming through we're talking like age bracket you know 18 to 25 you know, it, are, are you seeing any involvement with younger notaries at this point there in Georgia? Honestly, I'm not, which is one of the reasons why I pushed my daughters to become notaries. Um, my daughters are 23 and 21. And before they left home, I said, okay, all right, go ahead and go get your commission. Um, for the simple fact that you just never know when you might be able to lean on your service or lean on supporting people in the community, um, you'll be able to lean on and lean into that in order to support yourself or generate an income or make an impact or whatever. So um, I haven't seen it, but I'm intentional about when I talk to young people, one of my um, notary signers the other day, she was saying, you know, I think I want to do that. And I gave her my card and I said, if you want to you know, get into the notary community, let me know. And she's in college. And so I encourage them, you know, to join in or I, I make myself available to some who have questions. But um, I haven't I can't say I've specifically seen it in this area. That's not to say it's not the you know, what's going on maybe in North Georgia, where the city, the bigger cities are. But um, gotcha. <clears throat> gotcha. you guys got any any follow up questions? I'm just nosy. I have some questions. I don't, don't mind me. <laughs> no. <clears throat> yeah. no. Well, the thing that I like what you said is legacy. And that's what I'm trying to do myself. That's why I put so many videos out. Um, 
I know I sort of slowed down a little bit recently, but that's why I put the videos out for legacy because I see the same issues that we're dealing with now or trying to address. They're going to come back around in two to three, maybe five years, and there'll be a new set of notaries. And I want to have something out there that's addressing it. Um, because they're going to see the same thing. The people are going to come with the same slick stuff, the same mantra, the same, this is how you be a notary. This is how you make your money. Here's your tips, tricks, and nuggets. And I'm, a, <laughs> and I'm, and, and I want to have my stuff out there to where they look and somebody <clears throat> will look at it and listen to him and be like, wait a minute. He recorded this back in 2021, 22. And you mean to tell me they still doing these same things? Yep. Just wait a minute. So they still trying to pull the same piece of wool over my eyes that they did those other people. And some folks say, well, man, you messing with my business. I'm not trying to mess with your business. I'm just trying to keep people from getting taken advantage of who really want to do this business and really need to do this business. And they don't need to be taken for a ride. You know, that's the thing. And it's just so many people who have contacted me that really need to grow um, a business and they just feel like, man, I've been taken advantage of and I've wasted my time and it hurts their relationship with their spouse sometimes, yeah. you know, because their spouse is all in trying to support them. And then they come to find out and it, and it really broke my heart. Samantha, when a lady down there in Georgia called me crying about the fact that she took training from somebody and she didn't know that, they never told him it was an attorney state down there in Georgia. And she was bragging to her boyfriend that she was going to be making all this money. And he had put money down to help her with this. And he's like, okay, where's this $10,000? Yeah, and she's sad. like, yeah, and she's like, it ain't coming. And, that, and when she called me, it had been like three months that she was in the business mm -hmm. and only done one debt settlement oh. in mm -hmm. three months. Mm -hmm. And put all this money out with training and stuff, was taking training on how to be a Ron. <laughs> and this was back in 2021. Oh my gosh. You see I, what I'm saying? So yeah. so this is the kind of stuff that's going on. And guess what? It's going to repeat itself again. So the moment y'all get this thing kicking with the Ron, it's going to be a bunch of people outside of the state of Georgia. That's going to be trying to teach y'all wrong. And here's what I would suggest, Samantha. Maybe y'all should take this. Y'all should, y'all probably need to put out there, if it could be in the bill or whatever, that you, if you take training on Ron from somebody that's not a Georgia, that's not in Georgia, wouldn't you, you're not going, it's not going to be valid. It shouldn't be accepted. Because well, you know, I I honestly do not think this is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Not this is how I feel. I don't know if Georgia will ever be run. That's just my personal opinion. True. We might we might do a little electronic signature or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think it'll ever be run. And I I can eat those words later if it if it does happen. But what I do know is that you know a part of Ron legislation includes having to have something in there about training. And I believe that, you know, those services will be contracted out through, you know, an appropriate provider and hopefully will limit the number of notaries that are out here, you know, just taking this training from anybody. I mean, I've seen on, on YouTube where people are promoting Ron training in Georgia, you know, I, I could be messy and get on their posts and tell mm -hmm. them, you know, this isn't real. But one of the uh, main functions of GAN is to put out the correct information. So right, we right. have this information on our website. We have the bills to back it. I tell people all the time, um, if you know me, you know I hate Facebook groups. I just hate them because they're a place where people share their opinions about things most times. Right. And they belittle a lot of new people that come into the space looking for information. Well, they're sharing a bunch of he say, she say, and they don't produce any receipts. And one of the main goals of Ron, excuse me, of GAN was to make sure that when we share something, we had the information to back it up. You know, we we share the bill. We post the information from the governor. I mean, what else can we do 
in order to protect the Georgia notary community. And I encourage anybody that's listening, if you're in a state and, you know, you don't have Ron or you, you know, you're connected to your legislation, share the information from your state government so that you can properly protect other notaries that are in your state. Because there are people out here just trying to make some money. And I've, I've said it once, I say it again, they're making money off the backs of other people's ignorance when it comes to this industry and when it comes to the business. Absolutely. Yeah, that seems to be a humongous problem is, you know, a lot of a lot of the new notaries come in here. There's no playbook. There's no playbook uh, to, to really go by. I mean, when you join the NNA, you know, they have take this course and then, you know, you can go on and take the notary essentials course, but it doesn't necessarily prompt you after you're done. Um, with the initial portion of the NNA to go take the Notary Essentials course. So a lot of people will get NNA certified and they don't even know the Notary Essentials course exists. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I didn't know until Griffin. Yeah, you got trainers that's telling people don't even take, you know, or pushing them not to even take the Notary Essentials or even go to the NNA for any kind of, you know, training or anything. It's like, come to me and I'll teach you everything you need. <laughs> and that's the part that really set me off was people were saying that. You know, they calling me up talking about what well, they told me to, to come to them and they'll teach me everything they need. And I asked, I said, well, did you learn how to notarize? Nope. Nah. Then they didn't teach you everything you need. Hello. See, and then, that, that's and, the main thing right there. Right. I, I think one of the biggest problems that people have when they come into this business is they don't have a set plan. You know, when I when I started this business for myself, I had written down on a legal pad every single step that I needed to take before I took my first step. And I knew exactly how much each step was going to cost. I knew what training I was going to possibly take. Yeah. Soroka. I ended up taking his because I read Sign and Thrive and I saw that there was a seven day free um, mm -hmm. entrance to, to, to Notary Pro. And I was like, all right, bet. So I'm going to read this book, do my NNA stuff. And then when, after I'm done with the NNA stuff, I'm going to jump over, use that free seven days, see what's there, mm -hmm. which it turned out to be a great investment. You know, after after the seven days for $34.99, I, I, I subscribed for a month and I got the rest of the training that I needed. But I already had that planned out before I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make my first move. You know, a lot of people, when they get into this, they have absolutely no idea where to start, right? So they're looking all over the place and they're looking for answers. They're looking for how do I get to the bag the quickest? Yeah, and let's, let's be honest. Yeah, that's how they get taken advantage of, unfortunately. You know, because there's, yeah. you know, most of these so-called workshops out there, they're not, go they're not going to be honest with you. You might find maybe one out of ten, well, maybe two, maybe two out of ten that's actually going to tell you exactly what it is. But uh, unfortunately, within our community, you know, they we like to take advantage of others instead of you know helping them, like. Like genuinely helping them as far as start their business. Like I've seen people charging folks over two hundred dollars for them to set up an EIN number. It's free. It's free. It's yep, free. I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, like, it's, a, so, it's the funniest thing yeah, in the world. So it, 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 it's stuff like that. You are willing to charge somebody um, to to get them an EIN number that you are getting for free, and you're making two hundred dollars off of that. That's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like now, now, Samantha, have you seen them talking about? teaching notaries how to prepare legal documents. Yeah, that's another thing. I love that's what they're doing now. That's the new thing. That is the I, new thing. It's, it's not the new thing in Georgia because I don't play that foolishness. I tell <laughs> them that's quick. Um, you should not be preparing documents. You should not be charging your signers to provide them documents nope. or you are tr you trying to get yourself put in jail. Like Absolutely. nobody nobody has that you know conversation it's just about this is how you can make the money, not necessarily this is how you can protect yourself. I always say this, you know, always read your um, your trainer's disclaimers. And if they don't have any, to me, that is the first red flag. All your trainers should have some type of disclaimer. Like, you know, this is really dependent upon the work you put in it. None of these right. results are guaranteed. Yeah. Um, the the examples are, you know, um, not typical or whatever, because you can't guarantee anybody that they're going to make that kind of money legally mm -hmm. or right. consistently. I've had some really good months, even working a full time job, some really good months. Yep. And it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. 
But can I say that I was able to uh, replicate those things every single month in the last over four or five years I've done this? I cannot say that. Mm -hmm. See, and we talked about that when we discussed, uh, you know, are they are they mentors or are they what business consultants, business consultants? (laughs) Right. And, And so you got all these people out here that are paying for training, thinking that they get a mentorship, but they really don't realize that they're paying for a business consultant that's not helping them achieve anything. There's no. There's nothing that is a, a, a figure. There's 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 nothing that you can look back on a number to say that I want to hit this number when you when you turn up and pay for something from these people. Mm-hmm. You know, th- there's there's nothing tangible that you're getting other than information. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that we always talk about here. Information is free. Just do the Google search. Stop paying for information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But people don't know that the information's out there. That's true. And you know what? I wouldn't even I wouldn't even lean so much on the um you know, the Google and the information, because I've Googled some things that turn out to be way wrong. You know, that's very true, too. Um, but at the same time, it's it's what do you do with the information once you get it? Because like you said, you picked up on Sign and Thrive. You did this with the NNA. Then you sat down and started making the plan, started working that thing out. You started applying what you were learning. A lot of people go like, you know, to the buffet eat, 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 and then wonder why they're sitting back with a stomach ache looking crazy. Well, they haven't applied. They just went and consumed all of this content and then have no clue as to what to do after the fact or even having somebody to kind of guide them. But at the end of the day, again, it's about you having those critical thinking skills, mm-hmm. putting, the, putting the puzzle together piece by piece because a mentor doesn't do that for you. A mentor shares their experiences. They don't necessarily create that experience for you. Your experience is going to be your experience. Yeah, that's yeah, excellent. That's and true. that's why I've been saying learn, execute, and then you either succeed or fail. You learn something, you execute what you've learned, and then either you're going to succeed at it or fail at it. And if you fail at it, you figure out what was the problem. Either you didn't properly take in the information or the information that was shared with you was completely incorrect or it was good and you took it in, but the timing was off. It wasn't the right time to do what you're trying to do. And there's all kinds of factors. And then once you figure that out, which still goes back to the critical thinking skills, then you can figure out, okay, here's where the error was in my life. And now I go back relearn or find out, okay, let me execute this at a different time. So, you know, that's really where it's the people who try to get on what's the, um, the groundworks with the house inspection. I said, don't last year. I said, don't try to start doing groundworks. If you work in a full-time job and you get off at four o'clock or five o'clock and you can't do anything until you get off work. I said, guess what? It's going to be dark because of daylight savings time. So trying to do the groundworks in the winter time, yeah, is not the time to be doing it because if you can't necessarily do those orders until you get off work and you're getting off work when it's dark, you know, I said, that doesn't make sense. So it's not that you can't do it. It's just, you picked the wrong time to try to implement this thing, you know, you know that, you know, so there's people coming into business now and they're saying, well, I just want to do this part time. I'm like, okay. And guess what? 90% 90% of those people still don't have the proper equipment. Right. They're, they're, I mean, right. they're darn near using dot matrix printers <laughs> 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 with the little tab papers with the little holes on the side that you rip off. <laughs> look, Griff, you're look. really showing your age there. Look, don't, don't <laughs> laugh. When I, look, when I first came into the business, I was trying to do inkjet. I did not mm. realize it. And mm-hmm. I, I've said this before. That was my first big, huge and last mistake when it came to printers. Like Mm -hmm. I started seeing, you know, there are people who are sharing the importance of having the laser jet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go get the laser printer. People were telling me you didn't even that that you shouldn't have a dual tray printer. And I was like, and I and I listened to them for like a moment, and then I got and then I found out later those people was either working in a title office. Yep. Or the clientele they had always sent them letter size or all legal, but never a mixture. Mm-hmm. So this is where I was like, OK, y'all not be. I'm going to say this and I know it's going to tick some people off. Oh, 
But sometimes notaries can be the most disingenuous people out there. And I say that because back and the reason why I say that is because so many people are sharing their experience, but they're not giving you the other side of it. Mm -hmm. They're just saying, hey, here's what I do. You know, like I've heard right. people say, you know, I never print um, mixed pages. I always print everything on letter, mm -hmm. but they don't tell you that they have a client that is OK with that. Yeah. You see, so now here you are with your client. And then you go try to implement something that this person told you and they didn't give you the full story. Now you just got blacklisted yep, because like you look like you can't follow instructions. So that's why I say, you know, they're, they're being disingenuous because they're only telling you a portion just to make themselves seem special and have you ooh and on over them. And then next thing you know, you out the business and you got some printers that. Me and Q gonna take them and resell the people. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, but that's really what the oh, problem man. is, man. It, it, you know, part of the issue it has to do with the times. It's not just notaries; it's happening everywhere. You know, there's there there is a real search to such thing as social currency. That is something that is happening, and it is coming here to America. Mm -hmm. This is happening in other countries right now. So yeah. you have people right now that are making business decisions based off of somebody's personality, not 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 logic. But off of somebody's personality that they like, and they say, "Okay, I'm just going to go with that." Yeah, which which leads to disaster, you know. And we are seeing that, you know. I know you guys are seeing that in the notary industry as well. You know, I'm not going to say any names or anything like that, but it's been happening. It's happening on IG, and yeah. you know, you're, <laughs> you're following these people for the wrong reason, and then three to four months down the line, you're going to hit up Griff. Talking about how I do this, or you're gonna hit me up about yeah. you know how I do yeah. Google. You the, know you're gonna the hit captivate. Yeah. You know. and, and see, yeah, but stop, you know, stop, stop, stop letting your emotion make the decision for you. Like stop, you know, stop getting played like that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm getting tired of it. And, you know, I'm I'm trying to be professional as always because I can't be petty, but I won't. But <laughs> look, make the right decision. To something. You're right. And I think I might institute something with Captivated where like I'm I'm gonna need a plan before I start working with you because what ends up happening is, you know, there's a long list of things that they need to get done. I'll say, Okay, let's let's of course I can help you. Let's get you the things that you can do for yourself for free. Yep. We'll guide you that way. And then any service that you need, I'll help you. And then when it starts coming down to like working on websites, right? And I start asking for information. What are your fees gonna be? I don't know. You mm -hmm. haven't thought about your fees yet. Okay, what is your coverage area? Well, I'm not, I don't know. Down the street. Down the street. <laughs> 15 minutes. What is All 15 minutes? You, you, you know what I mean? I'm going to do this whole county. But then when you look at a map, they go, oh, wait a second. Yeah, no, that's far. I don't, exactly. I, I don't want to, I, like, people, you need a plan. Just straight up. You need a plan before you start moving forward. Mm -hmm. Do you think, so y'all, do you think sometimes these conversations are too hard for the new notaries. Like hmm. what you say is, is heavy. Like it's too, too much weight on it because again, I'm coming into the industry. My goal is to, you know, make a thousand extra dollars a month. Maybe it's not a pressing bill or whatever, yeah. but I want to make a thousand extra, extra dollars a month. And they come across this podcast or a conversation and it's like, man, you need some goals. You need to you need to have this. You need to stop doing that. Like, do you think this just might be too heavy of a conversation for those coming into the industry? I mean, and I'm just asking. I'm not, you know, pointing fingers. I'm just asking. I think that for a lot of new notaries that are coming into the business, the decision to start the business is emotional and not logical. Agree. And I think that when they have a conversation or they run across Griff's channel or they, you know, contact captivator they pro probably contact you as well they get the logical side of it and, and then it's like oh wait a second i i need to think about this a little bit more yeah. this isn't going to be as simple as i thought it was going to be i'm mm -hmm. not going to start making 10 grand this month this might take me some time mm -hmm. right and i think also what they're doing when they come i, I know when they come to me they're comparing what they heard from so-and-so on the Facebook a YouTube group. commercial and Facebook group, mm -hmm. they're comparing them and then, and they come to me because they're like, okay, they say, Griff, you're talking logical and making sense, but you know, and you're being real with us. 
However, when you ask me how to go about doing this business and I'm talking logical, you're going in, you're still holding on to your emotional, the emotional part of what you got hyped up with from listening to somebody talking about how much money they're making. Yeah. So right. you're coming to me hoping that I would just give you the TTNs, <laughs> the tips, <laughs> tricks, and nuggets, and tips, tricks, and, and nuggets, nuggets, and help you to, <laughs> and just tell you what to do. And it's and it's crazy because oh, most of the people who hit me up, I would say barely one percent of the people who've hit me up actually went to the NNA first. But I will say uh, probably a hundred percent of the people who did go to the NNA and implemented what the NNA taught them, they really don't call me that much, you know, for a lot of help. They, you know, they give me, you know, they have a little advice, need a little advice and then they're off and running. And then, you know, it's like my stuff, what I'm saying is just confirming what they thought and what they figured out. But the people who've taken all these trainings, they got all of this stuff running through their head. And it's like Q said, it's all the emotions. And then they're, 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 looking for something logical, but they can't let go of the emotions. And here's the reason why, in my opinion, I got to say that nowadays, in my opinion, <laughs> the reason why they can't let go of the emotional side is because of the amount of money they've invested. And I think right. Samantha, you remember when I first came on, I used to say all the time, you're going to follow the advice of who you paid the most money to. So yeah. the signing companies and the title companies are telling you, this is how we want you to do this closing. Yeah. And you're like, but that ain't the way so-and-so told me. So-and-so didn't teach me that way. And I done paid them $500 or $700 or I done got into a million dollar club. And you, and you, it's in us to execute what we paid the most money for. If I went to college and I paid $80,000 for this education, that's where I need to have a job at. Even though there's no jobs for that for that education, gotcha. But that's what's on you, you know. And you're gonna try to execute what you paid the most money for, versus the simple of follow these three steps and you'll be fine. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, looking at the time here, I know, you know man. We, we we're running a little long. Um, so I'm just going to say right now, Samantha, you got to come back because we're not done talking to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Samantha got us going long tonight. You, you, you got to come back. You, you got to come back. Come on now. No. Y'all didn't see it. Samantha kept raising her hand. She kept throwing see, this, her little thing. This is about, what's going to something. I got something to say. we like, okay, Samantha, go ahead. Samantha on. keeps saying no. What Samantha doesn't know is, first of all, we, we, we reached a thousand listeners. Oh, congratulations. Right. Thank you. Thank you. We, we just hit yeah. that today. Congratulations. We just hit that today. So we're going to take all of those people that listen to us, and we are going to spam you until you agree to come back. Because <laughs> we're not done. Because I, I can guarantee you they want to hear from you again, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so please, it doesn't have to be this year, but please, we hope that. Well, you I mean, back. you're talking about it don't have to be this year. We, we've got what? It's still got to be in the middle ages. Two months. Right. I mean. Yeah. All right. We'll, right, do, right. It, look, we'll do a January 1st edition. When when the clock strikes midnight, since we're all on the East Coast, and uh, unless somebody plan on being a little lit, you know, then we'll, we'll do a notary's <laughs> on seal. I don't even know what lit is at, no more, man. At, uh, <laughs> at, at 12.01 a.m. on January 1st. <laughs> man, I, got, I don't even drink alcohol, so I'm going to be straight. Oh, okay. Like, what up? Oh, I'll well, probably I mean, be working look, on somebody's website. I, this, I, like I said, you guys are doing, um, I think, an amazing job. Um, I would love to come back. I would love to come back with updates from Georgia. But like I said, mm -hmm. I don't think Georgia doing a whole lot of changing. But if we're just talking about, you know, business and, you know, any anything you guys want to talk about, most definitely count me in. I think, again, this is a great platform. And I'll be excited Thank to you. see who else you invite to come in and be a part of the conversation. Oh, it's a man. very short list. Very, very short list. <laughs> very short list. <laughs> so, but we working thank on it. You. <laughs> no, thank you. We 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 appreciate the, you know the kind words. Um, you know, I, I think we were all looking forward to getting you on. We're happy that we were. I'm sure that the listeners are very happy um, that we were able to get you on here. So, thank you again. Um, we really do appreciate it. We support everything that you're doing. Um, and you guys out there that are listening, make sure that you follow her on I. Uh, Hold on. Let me make sure I say your Instagram right. Can you say your Instagram? I don't want to mess it up. I am She Listens LLC. 
I am She Listens LLC, spelt the right way. There's nothing, no Ebonics or nothing in there. It's spelt exactly the way that it sounds. <laughs> All right. Um, make sure you check out Samantha Smith, and we definitely thank you for uh, for joining us. Do you have any final words that you'd like to share with the, uh, the guests before we uh, head out of here, Samantha? Oh, I, look, again, thank you all for having me. Um, I just want to encourage everybody that has uh, taken the jump, the leap, the, you know, the tiptoe into the notary industry, I can only attest for myself as to how it has changed, just how I see things, um, how how I'm moving as far as business is concerned, um, and how I am very much more intentional about service. So if that's what you're looking to do, serve and impact, be intentional, you know, this is the industry for you. And I encourage you to you know, not be swayed by all the negative and naysayers when it comes to, you know, there's no business or, um, you know, you can't work with attorneys here or you, you got to go over here. Like, don't be swayed by that stuff. Find you a niche, niche down. I know you hear that often and lock in and move. And most importantly, um, stay true to who you are while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. stay true to who you are while you're doing it and you'll get much more success from that really than you can you know following the trends of this industry so stay encouraged and um, keep moving forward absolutely well, you heard it from her mouth herself because she listens yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright fellas you got any last words for us before we get out of here oh, nah man. I'm good no, I just want I just want to you know give a shout out to everybody that actually take the time to listen. Just like you say, we reach over a thousand. Um, what you call it? Well, listen on or what you listeners? Call it? Yeah, yeah, listeners. Thousand look, listens. Look, yeah. Shout out to you guys. We appreciate it definitely. Um, you know, keep on sharing the podcast. Um, you know, we greatly appreciate the support because I know. Not everybody's showing the fellas a lot of love out here, you know, in these Nordic streets. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. A thousand listeners—that's a whole other topic. A thousand <laughs> listeners, we greatly appreciate it. You know what? That might be the topic next time Samantha come on. What she sees, her perspective of the the notary men. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Oh, and Lord. where we can probably step up even more Jeez. and stuff. But, you know, in, in all fairness, then you need to have more women a part of that particular episode. Like, don't don't let it just be what I think and say, like, let it be some, you know, some others who can lend to that conversation. And I'll Damn. just leave it at that. I'll, all right. Yeah. No, we're stopping. <laughs> we were, we're not going to go any further. Like, right. This conversation could continue. We are ending the show. Griff, you got anything? Uh, I'm good. But it, well, like Matt said, thanks, everybody, for listening. Really, really appreciate it. If you think you want to be a guest on the show, you got to get through me. And if you don't get through me, you won't get on the show. Samantha was on. <laughs> she, so that's just the way it is. So Samantha already knew she was on. But the rest of y'all, if you can't get through Griff, you ain't getting on this show. Period. And don't go asking. We'll, we'll we'll invite who we want. Just saying. Yep. Just yeah. Saying. They send me the list, and I just sit there with my permanent marker, <laughs> <laughs> putting lines through. <laughs> Right, we, we might be blackballing people. Or so. Any, anyway, all right, folks. On that, we're gonna bid you a duo. Yeah. Wrap this thing up. Hey, we know the reason I seal. We're out of here. We know the reason I seal. Here we go. Took the game over. We yeah. home now. We soldiers. Griff, Mather, and Q, the podcast. You can't hold us. Y'all heard the word. Uh, Y'all heard the word. Uh -huh. Griff, Mather, and Q. Yeah, we on a verse. So diverse with no rehearse. That's how we work. Authentic when we give it. If we said it, then we meant it. Not to be confused with other people's views. They get it how they get it, and we get it how we do. Look, homie, this is a whole different game. We got a whole different aim. We in a whole different lane. Yeah. We know the reason unsealed. This my everyday life. We know the reason unsealed. Everyday I hustle out here living it right. We know the reason unsealed. Put the stamp down and step in front of the mic. Took the game over, we home now. We soldiers. Griff, Mather, and Q, the podcast, you can't hold us. We know the reason unsealed. Everyday I hustle out here living it right. 
know the reason I'm sealed This my everyday life